Uh, hello everyone, uh, this is another Sysmos Track uh, software tutorial. In this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to perform a cyclic analysis on an infill masonry wall structure. So, here is some uh, data. So, we provide a cyclic load steps and amplitudes. So, here it is. You can create as your own. And then, after you are lying in the top of the structure, and the analysis completed, you will you can get the exercise curve like this. So the exercise is the displacement in the top of the roof and the maximum shear force on the base of the structure. So we jump to the structure. We select as a random example. Uh, we can use the building modeler. Uh, but before that, uh, let me fix the unit which unit we use so i'm gonna use uh, let's go to be as default meters kilonewtons so i'm gonna use uh, si m kilonewtons and okay and i'm gonna go to the unit uh, building modeler so i'm gonna select two stories instead of one story i'm gonna select two story at least uh, each story has three meters and totally Six meter height. I'm gonna create a new project, but uh, before that, let me uh, let me show you one more thing. I'm gonna back to here. Um, we can go again. No, and you comes to here first. Change the stories. So uh, totally, I want two stories, and you can come to the advanced setting. So here is something you should uh, make fixed. The first thing is analysis type. We want to conduct cyclic analysis. That's so that's a static term history analysis. And you also have uh, op option to change the uh, frame element modeling. So which kind of uh, element you want. So uh, in elastic force based uh, frame element, in elastic plastic inch force based element. So this is the total uh, available uh, method for the uh, modeling and nonlinear behavior of the frames. So I select uh, inelastic plastic hinge force based element, so which is very common and the result is acceptable. So, but you can verify as for the walls, you can select infill plastic hinge force based elements, or you can elastic plastic hinge displacement based force element. So, for this one, I'm going to using this. And we also have for slabbing for the load combination coefficient so we do not apply any gravity load or anything else so just this one is can be changed when you applying some gravity loads and also seismic loads so performance criteria also can be fixed but we are not interested in this because we just want to uh, see how the exit response of this structure is and also you can considering some uh, so based on this it will automatically will show you the applied load is a displacement when you selecting static pushover then automatically also will be a uniform distribution so and automatically will change so I'm gonna select static time history and it will be automatic so program will give you a uh, option to give that one and also define control load it's automatic uh, the program detect which point should be the control control node and that's very uh, good for us instead of introducing in the first or second one okay now create a new project now we are in a uh, building modeler uh, in the building modeler first we want to uh, draw a column 300 by 300 I'm gonna click the column and selecting the geometry and some the square 300 by 300 so I'm gonna select this point uh, this point is this point here and the second point is between this point to this point is one meter I'm going to select four meters one meter two three and this is four meter so this is four meters in the second I'm going to add the uh, beam so the beam is 300 by 400 so selecting center to center this point to this point and the last one, I'm gonna define a, a infill masonry walls. You can select the materials. You can select the materials. This is the material is uh, the size of the brick is 200 millimeters, and uh, height is 16. 
uh, the thickness of mortar is considering 10 millimeter. You can change the compressive strength of that material as you wish. So I just select this as a as a default, and this is 300, which is equal to the length of the column. And selecting center to center, and I'm select this point to this point. Now you can see the the model is created. So now we do not need to uh, go to the second floor to copy to do the same things, but we're using this command is called copy from the first floor to second floor. And OK, and it's all automatically. So we're gonna go here, and now you can see it is two stories. So I can close this and save the model. And maybe in the future you can uh, re-edit this one called uh, info masonry wall save it and here automatically which we uh, selected in a setting uh, that uh, time uh, static time history analysis the program will give us so this is the equal the uh, is this a curve which we have written here so in case if you want to extend this for longer then you can ask it to be further so you remember this is the load factor which is uh, using uh, meters so this is quite a large so we want to make reduce this one so I'm gonna OK so the program automatically controlled everything but we come to the uh, first material we want to change some material we want to get a very pinched model so then we have to because the material is quite sensitive in a nonlinear behavior so we want to use asis resist material so this is the asis resist material so i can change some uh, uh data based on i wish uh, such as let me go to the change the yield strings in a positive direction to 535 and this is also this is kilopascal. Let me make it uh, putting uh, three more uh, three more zeros. This one, and this also in the negative is this one. So other parameter like peak strain in a negative is let's be a twenty percent. 20% and, and the modulus of elasticity everything we can assume the peak strength this is the peak strength should be quite higher higher than like 620 uh, and this is the residual stress stress uh, let's going to be this one 200 and this is also 200 and this is the pinching uh, uh, criteria which means the zero means no pinching and one is quite high pinching so uh, the info uh, frame is quite high pinching structure so we can give at uh, least be uh, number six in case it's not specified when we doing a verification so that then you can uh, play with these two parameters and the situation is that 50 is uh, maybe yes we can give 0 0.6 so the specific weight is equal to the weight of the uh, structure uh, steel. So that's not too much difficult. So we come again and we change it this one uh, to five thirty five, and again five three five, and this is twenty percent the peak strain, and this is uh, six hundred. 635, 630. Uh, we, can, uh, we can give it again 630. 1, 2, 3. And uh, this also in the negative direction. And this is 200. And 200. And this is uh, 0. 6 and this is 0 0.4 for so this okay we have defined a uh, is material for both and also we can considering for the concrete 
the confine may will be 1.25 so other parameters also we have uh, we have we can change it let's uh, change the uh, compressive strain should be uh, 15 and the tensile strain should be one it's automatically can detect that 10% uh, of the of the compressive strain so no okay and now we have uh, brought some changes in the material and we go to that time history and we can uh, view that one which you already defined so this is the maximum is 8 so we want to reduce we want to push this one in back and forth by 0 0.2 uh, meters or 20 centimeters so I'm going to apply the load and this static load is applied in the all uh, three nodes so but was mostly we will take the displacement from this point which is if you go to find that node is the control node this is the control node which is equal to the middle of this point we uh, come back to the applied load and we want to uh, change this value is already changed if we considering 0 0.1 so that times we will times to 8 so it's quite large so when you 0 0.1 times in it become 0. Point almost 8 centimeters so now we can assume this is okay or we can change it to uh, 0 0.2 and this is also 0 0.2 and this is also 0 0.2 uh, next uh, we want to run the analysis processor and we're going to run but it required to save it so we're going to call it infill So now the analysis is starting and you can uh, see the performance QTR logo here and the time steps here it is yell crash here we are So this is the analysis completed. We're gonna go to post processing, and we want to see how the is this response of this uh, structure is. We're gonna go to global response, and we come to instances, and we can see the node is taking from the control node. Control. You can select the control node as well, or program automatically give. And it's called lift axis, load level, total base share. So I'm gonna call it graph and correct so the program gave us this data so this is uh, kilonewton and this is meters so we can brought this take a value and select all and then copy the selection and i'm going to bring it to here and go paste so now the analysis is completed and this curve is giving for us so i'm going to check it because uh, this was in the uh, opposite so we times to minus one and also uh, this one is no need because uh, i'm gonna it's already kilonewtons we selected kilonewtons so it's not need so i'm gonna select this one as a general and you can see here is so i'm gonna select this one and put it down to see where this one is added so exactly in the same area. now you can uh, uh, in case if you have experimental data you can compare with the experimental data. so let me show you one of the experiment and you, uh, here is a model uh, which I already said that the infill with in the infill uh, masonry wall has a very high pinching so the pinching is quite large so this is the model they have sim uh, experimented uh, so uh, now uh, you can come back to the uh, uh, 
a paper result and play with these parameters, especially with these isostasis parameters. So now you can give, uh, let's suppose that should be eight. And we go back to the another one. And again, this to be eight. If you rerun the analysis and you compare the result to see how it works. Now we, we uh, finished the analysis, I'm going to post processing again back and to see how the response is. Global response and host curve and going to graph and show. So now the pinging is a little changed. If I go value and select all and copy selection, go back to here. Now you can see some changes may have made. So but the pinging is increased a little. So what we're going to do is we're going to bring down from the 0 0.8 maybe to 0 0.43 so maybe 0 0.2 to 55 so you should make a fitting and that result will be proper for your uh, verification so this is the end of the tutorial if you have any question please put in the comment and i will find time to answer you i'll see you next time and if you like this video please subscribe and comment and share with your friends see you next time